Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and this is the thing, nobody likes getting lost. It brings back these horrible memories of being in the supermarket and it's like, where's my mum? I've got my Frosties, I just wanted to put it in the basket. Ooh. So it's always like a war flashback whenever we get lost in a level and start panicking. Well fear not my friends because I'm here to act as a guide uh, to show you a list on levels that everyone got lost in. Yep, that's a bit hypocritical there. Brilliant, cool, let's carry on then. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 convoluted video game levels that everyone got lost in. Number 10. Irithyll Dungeons – Dark Souls 3 The Dark Souls franchise and From Software games in general are renowned for their densely packed tricksy level design, and this arguably never gets worse than it does in Dark Souls 3's infamous Irithyll Dungeon. Though not strictly the toughest Dark Souls area from a pure combat difficulty perspective, the dungeon is infuriating to navigate for even well-honed Souls players. The confusing layout combined with the brutal bonfire distance and tendency for those damn jailers to get the drop on you makes Irithyll Dungeon a stamina-draining slog of a level. The sheer repetition of traversing the dungeon will test the patience of even the most ardent fans of gothic architecture and neo-romantic art styles, ensuring that the mere utterance of the area's name will most likely make you shudder, if not groan. Number 9. Labyrinth Zone – Sonic the Hedgehog In the very least, you have to give Sonic the Hedgehog some credit for not dressing this level up with a fancy name. You know exactly what you're in for when you start a series of levels called the Labyrinth Zone. The original game's Labyrinth Zone is a series of ruins partially submerged underwater, and introduces a majorly infuriating difficulty spike compared to everything that's come before. Beyond the fact that the bulk of the zone is headache-inducingly similar and loaded with traps, the underwater sections impose strict time limits upon players to avoid drowning. Who amongst us hasn't heard that horrendous drowning music? For God's sake, it's seared into my bloody psyche! The third act of Labyrinth Zone proves especially obnoxious, though, given that you're required to navigate a tricky maze under water, at which point an already imposing level becomes a total chore. Unsurprisingly, it's largely accepted to be the hardest zone in the entire game, and as a result, Sega moved it back from the second to the fourth zone during testing, feeling that players simply wouldn't be able to cope if it followed the lovely and charming Green Hill Zone. Number 8. Deep Jungle – Kingdom Hearts as much as many complain about Kingdom Hearts' is, 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 is story and lore being confusing, the original game boasted a decidedly trickier level design than its sequels, as was especially, almost painfully clear in the Tarzan-themed world Deep Jungle. The world brings the game to a grinding halt, with its emphasis on navigating a frustratingly samey-looking jungle, rife with excessive backtracking as it is, while also having to put up with the game's sluggish camera and controls. And this isn't to ignore the infamously clunky garbage that is the world's vine-swinging traverse mechanics, Jesus Christ, it's bad. As much potential as Tarzan World had, this was such a dull area to navigate that it made the game genuinely feel like busy work for a long old while. It's the sort of energy-sucking level that makes you feel groggy, irritable, and wishing that you were rearranging your sock drawer or doing anything instead. Deep Jungle isn't the game's only convoluted world, but it is absolutely the most aggravating to progress through. Number 7. Zepho Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order's Metroidvania-inspired gameplay is absolutely intended to confuse players to a point, encouraging them to search every last nook and cranny and then return later once they've picked up a few extra power-ups. While this loop generally works well enough, it does go a little overboard in the game's windswept world of Zepho. While an inarguably beautiful locale in purely artistic terms, Zepho is also probably a bit too big for its own good, as players are likely to end up lost and confused confused in large part due to the game's generally iffy minimap. Though unwieldy at the best of times, it's absolutely at its most intelligible here. Combine this with the lack of fast travel between meditation points and the fact that enemies respawn any time you rest at a said meditation point, and you've got the recipe for easy irritation. And for completionists, traversing Zepho is an absolute bloody nightmare. Number 6. Lud's Gate – Tomb Raider 3 Though none of the earlier Tomb Raider games were exactly a walk in the park, Tomb Raider 3 ramped up the difficulty to a punishing level with its more expansive maps that were designed to get the player killed and turned around as much as possible. And though there are a few ripe contenders for the game's trickiest level, only one proves to be the king of infuriation, and that is London's Lud Gate. While all of the London levels offer up a high level of challenge, Lud's Gate is absolutely hateful in how much disdain it shows for the players. Far more than any other Tomb Raider maze level, this is made immeasurably 
considerably more difficult due to the generally dark color palette making it tougher to tell paths and rooms apart. This is before the game hurls Lara into an underwater labyrinth where you need to hit a number of switches while also avoiding drowning and fending off attackers, both human and animal. There's absolutely no shame whatsoever in using a guide for this one because otherwise it could suck up hours and hours of your life. Number 5. Nowhere – Silent Hill The Silent Hill franchise has made an art out of leaving players wondering quite what the hell is going on, yet in terms of pure level design, nothing has ever matched the original game's final section, Nowhere. Nowhere requires players to traverse a three-floor maze which incorporates various areas encountered earlier in the game into a kind of intentional subconscious cluster of a labyrinth. Because there's no map available for this area and the layout is intentionally ambiguous, it's incredibly easy to lose your place and end up having no idea of where to go next. On top of this, you need to also solve a number of puzzles to acquire keys and make it through this hellish maze. As annoying as Nowhere may eventually become, it's undeniably atmospheric as hell, and certainly gets players right in the fuzzy, baffled head state of protagonist Harry for better or for worse. Number 4. Distorted Dimensions – The Matrix Path of Neo the Matrix Path of Neo is, despite its flaws, an ambitious attempt to translate the Matrix trilogy into video game form, though it also slams pretty hard into a brick wall with its over-egged late-game level, Distorted Dimensions. After encountering the Merovingian, he'll force you to fight your way out of a reality-warping chateau-style maze, a maze which is basically the equivalent of throwing darts with your eyes closed and seeing what happens. There's little in the way of clear logic to traversing it beyond sheer dumb luck, such that it can take literally hours to make it to the end, especially with the awkward platforming elements and the fact that you have to periodically fight giant ants. Yes, really. While it does make for an intriguingly off-the-wall challenge at first, it's ultimately more infuriating than fun, to the extent that many likely bailed at this point and never returned. Number 3. The Catacombs – Turok Dinosaur Hunter As terrific as the original Turok is, it definitely suffered from a few over-designed levels, and none more so than the fifth level, the Catacombs. The Catacombs were a sadistic exercise in chastising players, an almost laughably huge interconnected network of passageways, tunnels, and crawl spaces primed to leave players with little idea of where the hell they were going. And that's not to say the level isn't fun to a point, but the suffocating familiarity of the environment makes it an absolute headache to navigate and that's to say nothing of the slew of enemies that you'll find waiting for you throughout. Again, you should probably just save yourself a ton of strife and just use a guide, because otherwise you risk frittering away precious hours of your life trying to figure this damn thing out. Number 2. The Library – Halo Combat Evolved The original Halo is a brilliant and groundbreaking game in many, many ways, but it's also one bogged down by one of the most tedious levels in any blockbuster first-person shooter to date, and that is the damn library. This level sees players fight through four stories of seemingly un ending swarms of aliens known as the Flood. And while it's initially quite an ominous setting, it quickly devolves into tedium as you spend an hour doing basically the same thing over and over again. It's lazy, copy-paste video game padding at its most egregious, forcing players to try and find the path to the next story while keeping the ever-replenishing sea of parasitic aliens under control. While somewhat more tolerable when played in co-op, it's still a soulless, confusing bore, a level where you'll frequently forget your place and just wish it was over already. Ready. And number one, the Water Temple, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Could it have been anything else? The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time's Water Temple is the most infamously demanding maze-style level in gaming history, a challenge so absurdly heightened compared to the rest of the game that it prompted many young players to just simply nope out of the experience or just get their older sibling to do it for them. Of all the many, many dungeons in the series' history, the Water Temple has earned a unique brand of contempt among players who still bear its scars over 20 years later. Those who slogged through the original N64 version had to fuss about equipping and unequipping Link's iron boots in order to sink down to the bottom or float to the surface, which allowed them to raise and lower the water levels in areas as required. It was just a sluggish, painstaking process where progress felt like literally wading through thick treacle. And what made it worse is that a single mistake could set you so far back. The worst thing that you can say about this is that it just isn't fun. It's like dread-inducing homework in an otherwise masterful video game. And it's the exact example of level design that's complex without being clever or enjoyable. Boo, the crowd hates that. Boo. 
And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 convoluted video game levels that everybody got lost in. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go chat to me over on the socials, over on Twitter, at RetroJ with a zero. And I hope that you're having a fantastic day, whatever you get up to, my friend. Treat yourself with love and respect, because you goddamn well deserve it, all right? Now go out there and smash your life goals today. You can do it. As always, I've been Jules. You've been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.